G'day random YouTubers and fellow flight simmers. Today I'm going to share with you a Excel spreadsheet that I've done um, in calculating fuel consumption for any GA, GA aircraft that I um, that I use. And what it is here, as you can see, it's fuel calculated for the Cessna 172. But um, and uh, you can customise this to your own requirements depending on the uh, aircraft that you use. Obviously it's, this is applicable GA aircraft um, obviously there are other applications once you jump into jets um, that'll do your fuel calculations but um, I've sort of looked around uh, everywhere and uh, I haven't found any sort of anything that makes life easy or, or calculating your fuel. So Anyhow, basically, what you see in green, as I've said here, this is the inputs required. So all these things in green are basically inputs that are required by the user. And then the blue is, of, is of course, um, what's worked out by the, the spreadsheet. So today I'll, I'll go through an example and see how the spreadsheet works. And, um, and I guess you can make up your own, um, because I'll go through all the formulas, etc., um, or I can share it. I'm not sure how to share it. If people can shed some light on it, I use the Google Excel spreadsheets and I'm sure that it's got here share, but I'm not really that smart when it comes to this, this sort of technology. Um, so if you've got any ideas on how I can share this with other people, then um, put it in the comments below. Okay, so today what we're going to do is... Today we're going to do a flight from Moorabbin, which is a general GA airport uh, to the south of Melbourne, and we're going to fl fly out to Ballarat. And we're going to assume today we're going to do it. It's going to be an IFR flight. So uh, we're going to go via Avalon and ESDEG and into Ballarat. Now, um, what I want to... Uh, show you is that um, the trip itself is about as you can see is about 83 nautical miles it says it's 50 minutes but that's not really accurate it's based on the speeds uh, the winds and everything like that but anyhow we'll get into that later on at this time we just want really for to know that this is the distance so you can see the airfield elevation uh, we're departing Avalon and well that's quite easy to do if you want to know what the airfield elevation you either can go to charts or if you press your middle mouse button it opens up another tab and you can see here the elevation is 55 feet so we've put 55 feet in the airfield elevation the trip distance as you can see is 83 nautical miles the field temperature uh, well, this depends. Um, now, if you're flying on the VATSIM or if you've got a weather engine, you can get this from Active Sky. I don't have Active Sky um, installed, but I can go to this site here. It's called, well, it's the Bureau of Meteorology site, and I can do a search for Moorabbin. But uh, like I say, if you've got Active Sky, you don't really need to go. And you've got here the temperature and the Q and H. So we can see that um, the temperature here at Moorabbin is 16, the QNH is 1014. So the field temperature is 16, the QNH, and we're cruising at 6,000 feet. So you can see that the pressure altitude is 25. Now, if you don't know what pressure altitude is, I've got another video that's out that explains this. But uh, this is the this is the actual calculation that works out, and Standard temperature and standard uh, Q and H is 1013. Now, today it's the Q and H is 1014, so it's going to think that it's lower than what the actual field elevation. So you can see that you need this figure here to work out to go to this um, chart here. Now, so the first thing, as I said before, is it works out from my previous video the taxi fuel, and if you go down here. Uh, down the bottom of these notes you say note number one says add 1.1 gallons so I've just put 1.1 1 
and now this is where you've got to use this table on your right now this is from the A2A charts because I fly the A2A Cessna I used to I'm waiting uh, nervously if that's the right word for FS2020 because it looks awesome I hope they deliver on the promise but anyhow we're getting we're delving away from the subject here we use these charts and once again you can, there's a video um, that I've got out that shows you how to use this chart so the first thing we want to know is top of climb and we use these charts we assume that the pressure altitude is 25 or not assume we've worked out 25 so 25 um, feet is closer to sea level so therefore we we'll assume that the that the pressure or the pressure altitude at Morab on this particular day is zero and we want to go to 6,000 feet so and I've made it the math is so easy so the t t top of climb phase is going to take us from sea level to 6,000 it's going to take us 10 minutes so that's what's there the the fuel used is from zero from zero to uh, 2.1 so you put 2.1 there and the distance is 0 to 14 there's a 6,000 matches up with the 14 there so it's 14 and as you can see um, if you have a look at this note down below number three says the increased time fuel and distance by 10% for each 10 degrees above standard temperature well we've got 16 degrees and if you do the maths it's H3 which is 16 degrees divided by 10 because it's you've got a 10% for every 10 degrees and then you times it by 0.1 which is 10% so this 0.1 is 10% and this is for every 10 degrees above, above uh, standard temperature so you can see so that's the formula there so it works out there's a 16% temperature effect or you've got to add to each of these figures there you've got to add 16% and if you do the maths it's it's B2 times that B12 times B16 um, and etc etc so this is the extra time that it's going to uh, because of temperature effect to get your top of climb this is the extra fuel and this is the extra distance so this figure plus this figure will give you that figure and then this figure plus that figure will give you that figure and then this figure plus that figure will give you that figure so we know that from to get to the top of climb it's going to take another 2.1 gallons okay so now the next phase is your cruise now here it's got ISA deviation now I've got sky vector because like I said I haven't got active sky um, so to work out your ISA deviation um, the first thing you do is do a nav log and you can see by looking at this we want to know type of climb the top of descent so we want to know the figures you can see here temperature and deviation so this is the temperature from top of client to Avalon and then from Avalon to Wendy and then this is so you can see this is the deviation ISA deviation and you see it's minus two so you go back to this chart and you can see that there's three columns there's ISA minus 20 ISA and ISA plus 20 you can see we're ISA minus two so it's close to the standard uh, standard temperature now we're flying at 6,000 feet and like I said in my previous um, video that I not I like to normally I like to fly between 70 to 75 percent percentage um, brake horsepower so in this particular case I'll use a 71 and you can see that uh, it uses 8.1 gallons per hour and our speed is going to be 114 knots our true airspeed okay so having said that um, oh by the way I forgot to say that our cruise distance is obviously going to be our total distance minus this distance here 
okay so it will give us that um, now the true airspeed of course is uh, what you do is you you know that from the table it's going to be 114 knots so you can go back and you put 114 knots in there um, and obviously 6,000 now the thing is it wants to know the ground speed now obviously where do I work that out well because you've put in the the right amount this ground uh, sp true airspeed it will spit out in your nav log the ground speed and you can see that we've filled in or it's quite rightly we've put in the 114 knots from our table and it spits out this ground speeds 105 108 107 117 um, and you can see the reason that of course is because you can see the winds are coming basically from the west 247, 250, 255 so we've got a, a headwind so that's why it's slowing us down so you you do I I normally do a an average of the of those four figures and you get basically an average of 109 ground speed so your cruise time of course is your um, cruise distance divided by your um, your ground speed and that will give you a cruise time your fuel consumption which you get from the um, the table over here and your cruise fuel which is obviously your 8.1 um, B34 35 oh that's right sorry it's your cruise time times your fuel consumption per hour will give you that 5.0 so you can see that uh, and then of course your fixed fuel reserve as I said in my it's a it's uh, these days um, actually um, that's not quite right because this is an IFI flight an IFI flight um, you need is points I think uh, CASA says it's point 45 minutes rather than 30 minutes so that should be 0 0.75 okay so it's so remember that it this changes depending on whether it's I should put a note here whether it's an IFR flight or VFR if it's a VFI flight you can put 0.5 there if it's an IFI flight, it's IFR flight, it's 0 0.75, three quarter reserve. So we can see that basically the total fuel is obviously your fixed fuel plus your cruise fuel plus your climb fuel plus your taxi fuel. And that gives us 28.4. I carried 29 just to make it nice and easy. I always round it up. Um, and even though we've sort of conservatively worked it out um, so I hope you understand the process that I've worked at any questions put it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it um, if you want to know if you want to tell me how to share this to people who want to use it then uh, like I said you, you can you can put in your own charts like for example if you fly the Cessna 182 from A to A or the the Bonanza use their tables and insert them there or just do a copy of this and um, yeah so anyone can use them and even you uh, musical aviator all right that's all that's me done um, and I appreciate any comment down below cheers